Well, hello there. Um, tonight, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, some of the respiratory drugs. We're going to be doing respiratory, or you'll be reading about respiratory drugs um, this week. So I thought I would take just a short period of time and pick a couple of categories and um, just go over a few things um, about those. So let's start with talking about probably the category of drugs that is the most used as well as it is uh, the most readily available and that would be your um, decongestants or your you know your antihistamines specifically is what I would like to cover and the reason that I say that they are by far the most used um, medication is because those are the drugs that we use traditionally for treating um, the signs and symptoms of um, things like just like the common cold and we all have experienced that and the other thing is most of us are people that we like to self-medicate for things just like the cold. We don't have time to go to the doctor, and so if you're a healthy adult, usually you'll just go to um, the drugstore or maybe Walmart even or Food Lion or wherever, and you might pick up some type of antihistamine that will help you to get rid of that nasal drip or some of the... Um, all that congestion and junk that you might have built up, especially with sinus type allergies or anything like that. Most people will um, ex go and get them some type of over-the-counter antihistamine. Antihistamines, um, really good medicine, obviously. They wouldn't be so many of them on the market, and they certainly wouldn't be one of the top choices in over-the-counter medications for that particular use. But they also can be kind of, you know, dangerous because people do readily use them so much. And, and again, we are, we are kind of a society of self-medicating uh, when it comes to over-the-counter drugs. So with antihistamines, remember... Um, some of the things that we have to with uh, educating our patients about the um, safety with them. Uh, if they are a healthy adult and don't have any other health issues, um, then you know they they're pretty safe. Follow the directions, and they would have no issues. But you also could have a lot of factors like you know underlying disease to um, think about with patients that are on either numerous medications or patients that may have. Um, something that is affecting, you know, maybe their kidney function or cardiovascular function. And so when we look at that, then we um, may see problems with those particular people self-medicating with some of these antihistamines. All right, so let's talk a little more in depth about kind of the mechanism or the action of these meds. Um, antihistamines are drugs that are used that to antagonize the action of histamine. So if you remember... Um, about antagonist and agonist. You do need to know the difference in those and you've really got to have a good working definition of those down pat in your repertoire or you're never going to get this. And then there's drugs to come also that you're just not going to be able to get clear. So drugs are either agonist or antagonist. And what that does is it um, tells you that they act directly on adrenergic receptors. That's what it tells you by them being an agonist or an antagonist. And then these receptors are what tell the cells to do something. So an agonist binds with these receptors, okay, and then that causes some type of therapeutic effect. An antagonist also binds with the receptors, but it binds with the receptors and then it blocks some type of action. And so it kind of keeps the cell from being able to do something. So there is a difference in the two and with the antihistamines these are these drugs antagonize the action of histamine. So if you've ever heard something called the histamine effect that's what they're talking about here. So histamine is a chemical that is readily released by the body um, generally with immune response or inflammatory response and so you really need to um, look back at this and make sure that you, you totally understand what I'm talking about by saying those things. Um, antihistamines um, and antrenergic drugs um, end in O-L or I-N-E. That's something to kind of, that's an easy way to remember when you're looking at the a list of these drugs, um, how to identify them. So um, the an antihistamines and adrenergic drugs, they end in O-L or I-N-E. All right, antihistamines, what we're talking about right now, specifically, they end in I-N-E. So, you know, later down the line, when you get to the NCLEX, an easy way to remember when you're looking at a question and you can't decide whether the, you know, what, 
you know, look and see, is the question asking you something about, you know, sinuses or respiratory things, then you're probably looking for a drug that ends in an I and E, an antihistamine, opposed to one that ends in the OL, which would just be, maybe they're looking for the adrenergic effect. All right, so some common antihistamines. Um, we've got, you know, Benadryl, which is diphenhydramine. There's that I and E. Hydroxine, that's their I, ends in an I and E. Um, Claritin Zyrtec. If you look at those generic names for those particular drugs, that's where you're going to see the I and E at. Um, the Claritin, if you, that is Lortadine. And then we've got Zyrtec, which is, I think that's um, Cetirizine, C-E-T-E-R-I-Z-I-N-E, -E, I believe. And then we have Allegra, which you all also might be familiar with that one out there. And that one is Fexofenadine. And so all of them end in that I and E. And so that is an easy way to identify those as antihistamines. Okay, so um, triminic is another example, um, chlorphenamine, and that's one that we see with, you know, used with children, the triminic. All right, so one of the most common side effects that we see, and also this, um, the direct effect of the blocking of the histamine effect is that it causes drowsiness. Um, also, we'll see, you know, some nervousness, um, dry mouth. These are stimulants, so that's what it is doing to the person. Um, another NCLEX thing to kind of mark on your list of um, notes is to set, is to remember that NCLEX loves to ask questions about drugs that also have that anticholinergic effect. And one of the most common anticholinergic effects is dry mouth. So just kind of a side note there. All right. So um, I just gave you some examples of what we call the first generation antihistamines. And then we have what's called the second generation antihistamines. Um, and these have the same mode of action, but they're better for the daytime use. And why is this? It's because the first time generation, um, they readily cross the blood-brain barrier. Remember blood-brain barrier from anatomy and physiology? Well, here it is. And so they readily cross the blood-brain barrier, so they will have that antihistamine effect, but will also also cause drowsiness. The second generation drugs, um, they still have the antihistamine effect, but they don't readily cross the blood brain barrier. They don't just, you know, readily do it. So they really don't have the um, same effect with the drowsiness. So those are the um, antihistamines that you'll see that um, sometimes are labeled daytime use on them. That's easy, right? To keep all that straight. All right, so pseudoephedrine, that's a common second generation one. Does that one ring a bell to you? Because that is the one, that is the one, um, and this is the class of drugs that has been so abused and abused to the point that it makes it difficult for you and I just to go and buy a simple antihistamine um, at the drugstore now and that is because we this is the drug that is now kept behind the counter and you have to sign for it because this is the one that meth is made from uh, methamphetamine if you will um, know the name of that one all of these and then that I need so a toxicity um, thing to remember about it is in really heavy doses uh, we have to heavy doses you're um, concerned about toxicity people that overdose themselves kind of take too much. Um, and then also pe persons, you know, that have liver or existing liver or kidney disease, you know, they may end up in a toxicity issue um, unbeknownst because their liver and kidneys are just not um, detoxifying the drug out of their system like it should. So with the toxicity effect, one of the big things that we have to watch for is um, the decrease in urinary output. So less than 30 cc's an hour, we're going to have to report that to the MD and let them be aware of that, especially if they've been on heavy dose of, um, of um, antihistamines. All right, so I'll be back in a little bit, and we'll talk about another drug.